Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and thelupylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. Pokemon Crochet Volume 2 by author Lisa Tori has now been released and fans of the phenomenally popular Japanese game and TV series can make even more crochet Pokemon toys. Pokemon Crochet Volume 2 contains the patterns to create 20 different Pokemon toys and today I'll be sharing with you my review of this book and as well thanks to our friends at David and Charles Publishing I have a copy of this book to give away to one lucky winner so keep watching so you can find out how you can enter to win. Before we jump into the review make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. So earlier last year I had the opportunity to review the first official Pokemon Crochet book called Pokemon Crochet by Sabrina Summers. They have a lot of great Pokemon uh, toy selections in here and as soon as it arrived to my house my household of Pokemon fans went nuts and I started getting immediate uh, orders, they call them, <laughs> for different Pokemon toys. And um, if you've seen, been around the channel for a while, you might have also seen that I did the Eevee Pokemon toy here using the David and Charles Eevee Pokemon Crochet Kit. Now, the now that we have Volume 2, we have even more toys that we can make. And as I mentioned in the intro here, we've got 20 different crochet Pokemon that we can make. The book is broken up into three different sections based on the skill level. So there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So we have a toy for Snoam here, Munchlax, Clefairy, Chansey, Scorebunny, Glaceon, more Glaceon, Growlithe. Growlithe is one of my personal favorites in the book so far. Mew. Espeon. Umbreon. Mimikyu. And that one I don't know. <laughs> Sylveon. Leafeon. Chimchar. Turtwig, Piplup, Slowpoke, Mareep. I'm not a humongous Pokemon fan myself, so I don't know all of these names properly. Cubone, this one was my absolute favorite in the book. And Riolu. And he is the last Pokemon pattern in the book. Now this is written by author Lisa Tori and she is known online as Coco Crochet Lee. And she's a Canadian author. She might have also seen some of her other books. Uh, she's also the author of Harry Potter Crochet Wizardry, The Modern Guide to Textured Crochet and and friends, the one with the crochet. She's also a guest host on the popular PBS series Knit and Crochet Now. Now, the patterns in this book are written in the U.S. terminology, and the writing style of these patterns is done very differently than the first book. The first book, I um, did have some issues with reading the writing style of the author, and volume two has grown leaps and bounds, and I found the patterns much easier to understand, therefore making them accessible to a wider audience. Now, the resource section in this book also has a section called How to Read Patterns, which is definitely worth the read if you ever struggle with reading the patterns or if you're going through the patterns in this book and you're not used to the style, reference back to that How to Read Patterns section on page 8 of the book. Now in the front of the book here through pages 6 through 17, they cover the various stitches that are used in the book, special techniques, finishing techniques, and as I already mentioned, there's a section on how to read patterns. So you can see that they're all illustrated with these beautiful pops of color, and I found the instructions clear and easy to understand. We even have a section here at the back of the resource section on making up how to close a piece, crocheting parts together, doing embroidery, and sewing two pieces together. So definitely handy section, and if you're not already familiar with these techniques with amigurumi, this is a good place to start before actually digging into the patterns themselves. 
Now, the book lists that some of the patterns um, in the book are beginner, and the beginner patterns are the Snow, Munchlax, Cliff Fairy, Chansey, and Score Bunny. Now, although the patterns are listed as beginner, I think that folks um, should, before attempting any of the patterns in this book, should have an understanding of um, basic amigurumi and crochet techniques before digging in. And because all the toys in this book use a fingering weight yarn from We Crochet and tiny steel crochet hooks at 1.5 millimeter hook, um, it could be really discouraging and difficult for a beginner to pick up this book and attempt it. So, I mean, even like a one and a half millimeter hook to me makes me cringe because it's just oh so tiny. And um, it, for an absolute beginner, it would be really hard to get a good amigurumi tight fabric um, starting out that way. And that hook, the hook size is, is definitely not part of the standard crochet hook kit. So it's a, a little less accessible um, for some people just starting out. So the great thing though about amigurumi is that you can use the same pattern with bigger hooks and a heavier weight yarn to make it a bit easier on yourself, especially if you're new to amigurumi or you're, you're a really adventurous beginner and you really want to dive in. Um, I'd recommend starting with a worsted weight yarn in a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook to start. That's my favorite um, combination for starting amigurumi for beginners. Um, it will definitely make your toy bigger than the anticipated size given in the book, but it will be easier for you to work with and easier on your hands. And then once you're used to that, you can definitely go down to that fingering weight yarn and those steel hooks. Absolutely. But um, definitely, uh, I recommend is going bigger than uh the call for materials. Now, the one thing that I found in the book, and this is just a personal hang up, it's definitely not a make or break it for this book at all, is that there's no gauge information given. For most people who do amigurumi, gauge is not a big deal and they don't really care. But this is a personal hang up for me because when a, um, a pattern gives a size for the toy, like here we've got Chansey, it says the finished size is approximately 3.9 inches tall. There's no way for me to guarantee that my toy is going to actually be that size without the gauge information. So um, again, not a huge deal. I just think that if you're going to list a finished size, then give people the tools and the information needed in order for their toy to be that size because many people might uh, come into this expecting it to be one size and be disappointed when it comes out either larger or smaller than the expected size. But again, not a make it or break it. Really overall great book, very clearly written, and um, I'm excited to see some of the projects that folks will be making with Pokemon Crochet too. So overall, I really like this book. It was fun and colorful. It would be a great gift for the amigurumi aficionado that loves the Pokemon universe. I'd recommend this book for crocheters that are experienced with amigurumi or intermediate level crocheters wanting to make their own adorable Pokemon friends. So as I've stated at the beginning, we are giving away a, Pokemon crochet, a copy of Pokemon Crochet 2 to one lucky winner. To enter, visit the written version of this review over on my blog, theloopylam.com, and I'll make sure to link to that in the description box below. And when you scroll through the review at the bottom of the page, you'll find the giveaway entry form and giveaway rules. Complete the form and you'll be entered to win a copy of Pokemon Crochet 2. So thanks so much for watching friends. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you like free crochet patterns, I've got over a hundred of them available for free on my blog, theloopylam.com, many of which have step-by-step -step video tutorials. So make sure that you head on over and check them out. Thanks so much for watching friends. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.